We are so excited. Thank you for your heart. Thank you for your preparation. And thank you for the integrity through which you speak today. So open hearts, open ears, and we say thank you, Jesus. Go for it, Friday. Thank you, Pastor Leanne. Praise God, church. Hallelujah. It's a beautiful morning, and I'm so glad to be here to share God's word with us. I'm going to move very fast because I have limited time. And um, as such, I'm not going to really go um, too slow. Um, I, I just want to tell all this story this morning. How many of you like listening to stories? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, this is a story about me. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now, you know, I, I, had, uh, I have a wonderful parent. Uh, well, they are no more anymore. So, so sad not to have them today. Um, but my parents told me that in their marriage life, they never argued with one another. Yeah. Whatever my mom tells my dad, he just do it. And whatever my mom, uh, my dad tells my mom, he get it sorted and they lived a peaceful life. Amen. In fact, they said that their parents told them that they never argued. That was how they lived their life. And I have been married for almost five years now. And here's my beautiful wife. Amen. Amen. And we don't argue. Whatever she tells me, I get it so so bad. Amen. And whatever I tell her to do, she just get it sorted. Amen. If you don't believe my story, shout amen. So you don't believe my story. <laughs> well, if you believe my story, I would have actually been very much afraid of you. Because we argue a lot. <laughs> and one of the things that actually uh, caused argument in my house is when Noe tells me something that she told me before. You know, like, you've told me this thing about three times now, even four times. So I've heard it over and over again. It's enough. And then we argue a little bit and all that. So why am I sharing that with you this morning? Because I'm going to be sharing with you what Pastor Leanne and Pastor Dave have shared in the past uh, two series, I mean messages on this particular series. So if you are like me, who doesn't like to hear the things you've heard before, bear with me because we are going to hear the same thing today. Is that okay? Amen. Are we together, church? Amen. Praise God. So <laughs> that, that's, that's what we're going to do this morning. Um, yeah, we started on, the, on, on this series, Pastor Leon started sharing some vital information about uh, the rich on generosity. And one of the striking um, points she shared with us was that uh, some things that stop us from being generous. And she said one of those things, um, she mentioned three points really, uh, selfishness, poverty mindset, and fear. These are things that stop us from being generous. And I actually quite like the third one, fear, because there are a lot of reasons that makes us to be afraid when it comes to giving. And I'm just trusting God today, today that as we go into this teaching that we're able to uh, really get on how to, um, ho I mean, decimate that fear and able to become the person that God really wants us to be. And uh, she also uh, shared a, a platform where you can check how rich you are. How many of you have done this? How many of you have checked? I, I did it, actually. <laughs> I did it with what I currently earn. I did it with what I want to earn. So <laughs> yeah, I, I, I did it. So if you haven't done it, you can, uh, you can go through that and check how rich you are and what percentage of rich people in the world you belong to. And you will be amazed that you are really rich. So, Pastor Dave said two weeks ago that generosity is not natural. Uh, we don't feel rich, but we are. Yes, of course, we are. We don't know how blessed we are. Um, yes, I know the bees are coming, they are piling up, but all, all that being said, I mean, with all the bees, you are rich. You can afford to eat what you want to eat, where you want to eat, and when you want to eat. You are a rich person. God has blessed you so much. Amen. So let's appreciate God for that. Yeah. 
Okay? Amen. And he also said, we feed generous, but we aren't. We think we are generous, but we are not really generous. So today, I'm, I'm really going to be focusing on giving and the capacity of giving to change your story. And I'll be talking more about myself, the journey God has taken me through by giving. Because your story today can be much better if you just allow God to take you on a journey. And in fact, as a young believer, I wanted, there was this kind of hunger in me to be everything that God wants me to be. Uh, you know, Pastor Dave was talking about comp uh, compartmentalizing his one room uh, in those days while right? saving to get married, you know, with the rubbish stuff in one compartment and all that. And he actually encouraged us to let God have his way in every part of our life. Yeah. And the truth of the matter is, even though uh, financial issues are quite sensitive, <coughs> we as believers, we belong to an economy that is not controlled by the things we see around us. And if you allow God into your life wholly, I mean into your finance, into your marriage, into everything about you, he will change the story for you. So giving us one of those things can change a lot about your life. And guess what? God is the originator of giving. And none of us can outgive him. None of us, wow. not me, not you, yeah. can now give God. Yeah. Let's look at the Bible. The most popular verse we all know. John chapter 3, verse 16. Let's start from there. Okay? He said, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that who, so whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God so loved the world. He loved the world. He didn't look, I mean, he didn't fold his hand. What did he do? He gave. He gave. Amen. So when God gave his only begotten son, guess what happened? He gained a lot of sons like you, like me, like the person sitting next to you. He gained a lot of sons. And, and please, when we talk about sons, we're not talking about gender. Okay? Son is not about gender. It's not male and female. All right? If you read Galatians chapter 3, you will see the Bible explain that quite well. When he talk about son, he talk about your functional, I mean, your functional relationship with God. Amen. So for God so loved the world, he gave the only son he had. And through that son, all of us can come before his presence today and say, Father, we thank you. Why? Because God gave. And Jesus taught us to also give in Luke chapter 6, verse 38. Luke chapter 6, verse 38. See what Jesus said. He said, give, and it will be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over will be put into your bosom. For with the same measure that you use, it will be measured back to you. I know there are some school of thoughts that says give without expecting anything in return. That sounds politically I mean, uh, okay. It, it sounds to um, try to make us look holy. But God never, if you read through the scriptures from Genesis to Revelation, there is no place where God asks us to give without expecting something. So that is not really Christianity when somebody says give without expecting something. Because God said give and it shall be given back to you in good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over shall men give to your bosom. Now, you may not understand this quite well here because everything is packaged in Sainsbury's and all that store as you know, they, they don't have to do manual measurements. But if you go to a place like Africa, where you go to the market and things are manually measured, you will understand what this verse is actually talking about. 
Now, there are ways you can measure, and someone will argue with you that your measurement is unacceptable. Right. Because you really need to shake it and make sure that it's overflowing. <laughs> so, that was what God was saying. He said, give, and it shall be given back to you. Not in the measure you have given. That means that giving comes with reward. He said, give, and it shall be given back to you in good measure. Press down. Shaking together. In other words, when you have given, you receive a return of everything you have given in a greater measure than where, I mean, how you gave it. That's God's plan for our giving. And we all have to be open to God on this matter about giving and receiving. So as a child of God, God wants us to give. There is no two ways about it. God wants us to give. And not just giving as uh, look, Pastor Dave used last week to talk to us about tithing and offering. There are various ways God wants us to be involved in giving. Right. God wants to be involved in giving to one another. God wants to be involved in giving to his work. God wants us to be involved in giving even to a community. God wants us to live a generous life. Because do you know why you don't fetch drinking water from the pond? Do you know why? Because that standing water has the capacity to become polluted. It doesn't run. But go to the river. Even when someone has thrown some dirt some kilometers away or some miles away, by the time it runs for a long distance, because it's always giving, it's always flowing, it gets purified in the process of running. So when we give, our life becomes purified. We are not stuck with polluted stuff in our life. So that is why giving is very important in our life. Now I'm rushing. Why should we give? I mean, when is the best time for us to give? This is very important. Church, when do you think is the best time to give? First day of the week. Oh, wow, that, that's wonderful. First day of the week. But I think the best time to give is when you don't have. The best time to give is when you don't have. I will explain. And I will explain by reading a passage of the scripture to you. Let's go to 1 Kings chapter 17. Here what happened. This is very strong. I like this story a lot. Because it tells us the mind of God when it comes to giving. 1 Kings 17. I start from verse 8. Verse 8. Then the word of the Lord came to him saying, Arise, go to Zarephath, which belongs to Sidon, and dwell there. See, I have commanded a widow there to provide for you. So he arose and went to Zarephath. And when he came to the gate of the city, indeed, a widow was there gathering sticks. And he called to her and said, Please, bring me a little water in a cup that I may drink. And as she, has, as she was going to get it, he called to, to her and said, Please, bring me a morsel of bread in your hand. Now, look at what happened. Elijah caused the problem that there was no rain in the land of Israel for three and a half years. And in the midst of that uh, drought, God, I mean, no, there was no bread in Israel. Everything was chaotic. People couldn't eat. They couldn't buy things. And God commanded Elijah to go meet a widow. You know, God's ways are very different from our ways. Because naturally, you would say, why sending Elijah to a widow? Send him to the king. Because in king's house, there will still be plenty. But God didn't send Elijah to the king. He sent Elijah to a widow. And guess what? When God gave the, the command to Elijah, God didn't tell the widow. You understand that? But the widow needs to just be in a place of obedience to experience what is going to happen next. Now, Elijah got to the woman and said, give me water to drink, which is quite okay. The woman went to offer. He said, no, come, give me bread to eat. Hear what the woman responded. So she said, 
As the Lord your God lives, I do not have bread, only a handful of flour, of flour in a bin and a little oil in a jar. And see, I am gathering a couple of sticks that I may go in and prepare it for myself and my son, that we may eat it and die. That's how terrible it was. That was the last thing she got. And her plan is she made up her mind that at this moment, once we eat this, yeah. we're going to die because there was nothing else to feed on. on. And Elijah said to her, do not fear. Go and do as you have said, but make me a small cake from it first. If it was today, the first thing that will happen is someone will go on, the, on Twitter and tweet it. Uh, Prophet Elijah is rubbing on, <laughs> he is rubbing a woman <laughs> with the last jar of, of flour in his, in, his, in his basin. You know, a lot of things would have come up actually. That, that's why we have to be uh, really, I mean, our Christianity should be deeper than what the world expects us to be. It should be as what God wants us to be. Amen. So, that was what happened. And Elijah said, give me first to eat. Elijah did not deny the situation. He didn't say, oh, no, you, you should have more. No, no, no. He said, I understand that you've got nothing. I know that you have the last uh, flour to make a bread for you and your son, and after that, there will be no more. But give me first something to eat. Wow. What a word. What a word. For thus says the Lord, verse 14, for thus says the Lord, the Lord God of Israel, the bin of flour shall not be used up, nor shall the jar of oil run dry, until the day the Lord sends rain on the earth. Verse 15, so she went away and did according to the word of Elijah, and she and he and her household <coughs> ate for many days. The bean of flour was not used up, nor did the jar of oil run dry, according to the word of the Lord, which he spoke by Elijah. Now, it, it's quite, it's quite uh, encouraging to see how God does his thing in our lives. Yeah. This woman was running dry, getting set to die, and God came in the midst and said, give me first, then when I've eaten, you will have enough to eat. That requires a deep level of faith. Okay. So, I'm going to quickly share a few tips to rewarding giving. Rewarding giving. The first one is when it comes to giving. I know there are a lot of giving we do. We give to charitable causes and all that. But beloved, when it comes to giving, always give by faith. Always give by faith. Now, something happened to me when I was, uh, you know, I, I wanted to really, I, I, I just grew up with this mindset because my mom had told me that I should do everything possible to go to school. That was her advice to me. In fact, that was the only, st I mean, only advice I had all my growing up. And as a result of that, because we were, I, I came from a very poor background, so I, I thought the right thing to do was to save up for my education, for my university. So I started doing all sort of job. And one day, I had some money which I have made. I put them in my, I, 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 I didn't know why I did that thing. I put the money in my pots and went to church to pray in the night. Because in my church then, we have a room where you can come pray over the night. And, and at the moment I was praying, I just felt in my heart that I should give that money which I was supposed to save for my school fees to my pastor. That was Really, really, ah, uh, it wasn't so good. No, it wasn't so good because I, I need to go to school, and God is asking me to give that money to my pastor. And I, I summoned up courage and did it by faith. And when I got to my pastor and gave the money to him, I said, "The Lord asked me to give you this money." He said, "I have been praying all night that God." to send me some money to solve some issue. Yeah. Wow. I gave the money, and I, he prayed for me, and I left. At the time I got admission to the university, I had no single money to pay my school fees. We were supposed to resume in March, 
But something happened. The resumption was moved to July. Between July and March, something happened in May. I get crashed into a business that I was not invited. You know, you, you are not asked to do a business, but you went ahead and do it. That was what I did. I went ahead and did, uh, it was a photography business. I did it and I gave it to the person who was doing the ceremony. And guess what happened? He paid me the little uh, he could, but something happened that his son-in-law that worked there came into his house and he saw what I have done. And the official photographer they arranged for that wedding didn't do a work that was as good as mine. Immediately he called for me. He gave me a contract and by the time I did the contract for him, I had 10,000 of my currency above what I needed for my school fees. And that was how I paid it off and I was able to move on into school. Now, that's aside, I wasn't all actually also sure how I was going to pay my second year school fees because first year had been paid, all right? I worked as hard as I could. I did everything I could. And luckily, to cut the long story short, I had a scholarship offer. I, pl I applied for it. And guess what? The scholarship went through. I was given a lump sum of money that could pay four years school fees in one year. A lump sum of money, four years school fees in one year. Now I asked Emily this morning, how, because I, if I say it in my currency, you won't understand that. I asked Emily this morning, what is the school fees you pay here in the UK for an undergraduate? And she said it's 9,500. 9,250. Now, I got an equivalent of times four of 9,250 as a lump sum. So, what happened? The story continued to point number two. Give sacrificially. Give sacrificially. When it comes to giving, we, I, I know there are a lot of things that demand for our money. But there are times in our life we need to give to God sacrificially. A sacrifice is something you do not because you have it, but because the Lord needs it. Okay? Now, when I was paid that lump sum of money, I don't know what instigated me to go to travel to my home church because I was already in the, in the university. I should have just attended my university campus uh, fellowship and stay there. But on this particular occasion, I traveled home. And when I got home in the church on Sunday, there was a call, a church, the church wanted to do a building project. And they called for people to, to give to that project. I sat in my, my seat very quietly. I wasn't concerned because I'm not a worker, I'm a student, and this kind of call to give is what those who are working, who earn salary, you know, or business people, they are the ones you call to give to God's, to a church project of this nature. So I felt very unconcerned, and while I was sitting, I had a nudge in my inside. You are the one they are talking to. You've just got a hundred thousand naira. That was the amount. <laughs> I was like, God, what are you saying? He said, I want you to give fifty thousand out of the hundred thousand. Don't worry, it's not in pounds, so <laughs> don't be scared. <laughs> so, I was, this cannot happen to me. And it became an argument. But because I have always made up my mind that God, whatever you ask me to do, that is what I will do. But this was a painful instruction. I, I stepped up crying my life out. <laughs> And pastor asked, why are you crying? I said, I just, got, I just got my scholarship money paid to me. And God is asking me to give 50 out of 100,000 to him. And he said a word to me that changed my life. He said, this will not be your last scholarship. And I obeyed and I gave the money and I left. 
Guess what happened? A year later, I got another scholarship that paid times four of what I was given first. Wow. So by the time I finished uni, yeah. by the time I finished uni, I have supported five extra people in school. Incredible. Because the Lord, God, God used giving to change everything about my life. And I guarantee you, we will never have been, uh, have known each other today if not given. Because God used it to open different doors. Open a lot of doors for me. How did I get here? I would never have been able to pay for flight tickets that would take me from Nigeria to, to Europe. It came through scholarship. Full fee. Everything was paid for, including my flight. In fact, that was the first time I took a flight. And guess what? It was on priority. <laughs> Amen. True Erasmus modules. You can go check. Hallelujah. Now, the last thing I want to share as my time is up is give as led. Give as led by the Spirit. Now, the challenge about giving as led is when the Lord is speaking to us about what to give, sometimes we just shut him down. That, but that's the truth. You shut him down, not because you really want to shut God down, but you shut him down because you are looking at the things around you, and fear takes over. And one thing I've always found out, and I've, I've said this over and over again here, that when fear walks in, faith walks out. Because fear and faith does not occupy the same apartment. Mm -mm. They don't. It's either one occupies and the other one is outside, or one is in, the other one is outside. So that's the way it goes. So when fear, you allow fear, I mean, it, it, it's, it's understandable. I must, I must say that to us. It's understandable. You have bees, you have a lot of things, you've done your budget, but God is disrupting the system. I charge you this morning to take a step of faith. Anytime God steps into your finances, don't disobey. Because it's going to change your story. God does not even ask you to give to him because he needs it. God is asking us to give to him because he needs something to release heavenly blessings upon your life. That's why God needs it. What did he say? He said, the thousand cattle upon the hills belong to me. He said, if I need it, I won't ask you for it. Because they are mine. So when God asks us to dip our hand into our pocket, into our bank account, it's because he has a plan that he wants to achieve in your life. That's what God is calling us to. He's calling us to a life where we are not compartmentalized. He's calling us into a life where we can allow him to work even in our finance, even in our job, even in our promotion, in everything we trust God for. This year, we, uh, I'm just going to close with this because I have one minute, 55 seconds left. <laughs> when we did our, our vision offering, we, we wanted to give a particular amount. And I just told, no, no, we are going to double this, this year. Because we are trusting God to be able to move house. Right? And we did it. And the plan was, we'll pay 50%, and the other 50%, we spread it over the year. We did that. But I was praying one day, and I just felt in my heart, we should clear our vision offering now. And we did it. We did it for my savings. We were saving for our house. We did it. And I remember, I've always prayed, Lord, whatever the impediment is, that is keeping us back, remove it so that we can buy our new house and move into it. Now, one of the things I would want you to be aware of is it's not every giving that you give comes back to you in financial terms. It comes back in different ways. Right? Um, I remember while in Spain during my PhD, I trusted God for scholarship. I didn't get it. But I wasn't paying school fees. Right? And in that process, God took me on a journey. I learned lessons from that journey that have changed the entirety of my life. I didn't get money back in return. I gave. I sowed seed. 
Lord, trusting you that I will get scholarship for my PhD. I didn't get scholarship, but I didn't pay school fees either. <laughs> Praise God. But the thing God did, he used that moment to train me up for the things he's taking me into. And today I'm grateful to God that I learned those things. So it's not every giving that comes back in financial terms. So back to the story of our mission offering. We haven't sold our flat. We are still in that place. But God has done something today that we don't need to sell the flat to be able to buy a house. I want to understand that God is not a man that he should lie. Neither the son of man that he should repent. He hasn't said without doing it. Neither has he spoken without making it to pass. That is the God we serve. So, beloved, my charge to you this morning is live a life where your trust is in is on God. Everything about you. Let it be on God. And nobody who ever trusted God has by any reason come back and regret trusting the Lord. So I'm just asking us this morning to learn to trust God. It could be you are saving to pay your children's school fees. <laughs> Again, let me tell us, let me tell us this. Every money or every resource we have, they are not all fit. Some of them are seed. Bible said God gives seed to the sower and bread to the eater. Would you ask God each time something comes to you, say you have a lump sum of money or you, 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 you have some money and can you ask God, Lord, is this a seed or a fruit? Because God gives seed to the sower and bread to the eater. Sometimes we eat our seed without knowing it. We are spiritual people. Hey, George, we are not carnal people. In the world, the world system is if you give, you lose. Because to them, giving is you taking out of what you have. Their own arrangement, uh, arithmetic is one minus one is equal to zero. But in spiritual reality, one minus one is raised to power two. That is what we call a synergistic reaction. That reaction does not just give you a one plus one equals to two. It raises the power. And God wants to live in that realm of the raised power. God wants to take us on a journey. How many of us want to allow him? How many of us? God wants us to trust him. And as I close this morning, I want you to know that God is the ultimate giver. He gave us his son. That was where we started from. And through that song, we all have life. We do trust him with everything you've got. I just want us to bow our head this morning. I just want to pray a very simple prayer for yourself. And say, Lord, help me to trust you with the totality of my life. With my money, with my children, with my uh, spouse, with everything I've got. Help me to trust you. I don't want to compartmentalize and take some things away from you. I just want to learn to trust you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. If you are here this morning and you don't have a relationship with Jesus, God, don't, God doesn't just need your money. He needs your heart. He needs your heart. Would you ask him to come into your heart this morning? Would you invite him to be the Lord and the Savior of your soul? If you are that person this morning or you're watching online, I just want you to put your hand in your chest and we're going to say this few prayer together and after that I trust God that your life will never remain the same again and I'm going to invite the entire church to encourage others to pray this prayer together as 
Would you say these few lines after me? Dear God, thank you for sending your son Jesus to die for my sins. I believe he died, was buried and rose again. I repent of my sins and receive your forgiveness. I confess that Jesus Christ is Lord of my life. So today, I hand control of my life over to you and decide to live for you. Please help my life to make a difference. Amen. Dear God, we thank you this morning for your word. We just pray, Holy Spirit, that the word we've heard today, we, oh God, build our faith and we help us, oh Lord, to stand for you and live for you with every fiber of our being. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. church. That was so good, wasn't it? Stand with me, church. We're going to finish with a refrain of the song, God, you're so good. I've chose that purposely. So good, isn't it? different actually which I really sense God dropped in my spirit as you were